Welcome back to another Construct video and in this video we're looking at saving and loading but this time using files. So before we get started just a reminder that this is going to be for premium users only because we're going to be making use of something called a family. Family is not available in the free version you can use a workaround to get around this, but I'm not going into that sort of depth during this video. Now to start off, I've got a very, very basic level put together. So I've got four sprites that I've put together. I've got a save and load icon, so you don't need to see me making these or copy and pasting these offline. I've also got some blocks and my player. No behaviors have been added, and most importantly, no events have been added. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is set up our family. So we're going to right click on the families folder and add a new family. And I want to put any objects I want saved in this folder here. Now, this is just going to be my player and my blocks for now. But if you had other stuff like springs or enemies, these would also go in this folder. And then press OK. And for the family name, we're just going to call it objects. Now, I'm just going to change the family behaviors. You do not need to do this, but I'm going to give it the drag and drop behavior. This essentially turns our game into a level editor, so something like Mario Maker, where we can actually click and drag these blocks around and then we can save it and then we can reload that level. So now we've got that in place, we can now start working on the save and load. Let's start with the save first. So we need a couple of objects for our save. The first object that we're going to add is we're going to add a text input and we're just going to call this file name. And when we save an object, we need to give it a name first. And that way we're not getting my save as the only save file we've got. We can actually save it as something a bit more meaningful. So we'll place that next to our save icon. The other thing that we need is we need an array. And this is going to store all the important information that we need to save. Final object that we need is we need a mouse. So we're just going to scroll down and grab the mouse. And this is just so we can check if we're clicking on the save icon. So that's it from this side. Let's move into our event sheet. I'm going to start by right clicking and just adding a comment and I'm just going to call it save. If you prefer, you can also add a group and a group works exactly the same as comment. However, you can close it. So works slightly better. We'll stick with the group because we've created it now. So the first thing I'm going to do is check the mouse button and check if an object has clicked. I just want to see if I've clicked on the save icon and then hit done. What I also want to do is just add another condition underneath and I'm going to use this file name. And we've got this option to compare text. And all I want to do is check if the text is empty. So I'm just going to leave it exactly how it is. Now, if the text is empty, I'm just going to add an action. I'm going to use the file name. And there's a really, really lovely option called set placeholder. And all I'm going to do is, this is sort of that grayed out text where it says, please enter your name. I'm just going to use it to do um, name required. So this basically says, if you've not put anything in the file name, you must enter a name. Now, if you're curious what happens if you save the file without putting a file name, it just actually names it JSON. So it'd be JSON.JSON. Um, I like having this little bit of code in here just to say you need to actually put a file name in before you save it. We're going to copy and paste this line of code again, and we're just going to invert this block here to basically say, have you entered something now in this box? We no longer need the placeholder, so that can just get removed. If that's the case, we're going to right click, add, and add a blank sub event. Now this only activates if you've clicked on the save icon and if that um, file name text box has some values in. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our system I'm going to use an option called for each. I want to loop for each of our objects. So I think I've got around 14 objects, one player, 13 blocks. It will loop 14 times. And this is really, really important because this is what we're going to do to store all the information that we need to eventually load back up. So to do this, we're going to actually save it into our array. Now we need to actually set up our array first. So I'm just going to click on our array here and we've got some properties that we just need to change. First of all, the width is how many different values that you're saving for each object. I only want to save three. I want to save the object's name, their X position, and their Y position. If you were to add more complex objects that have their own properties attached, you might need more additional columns for this. 
And now I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm going to do a width for free. Height is how many different objects you're going to be able to save. We'll go for 2,000 objects. I think that's more than enough. But again, depending on how big of a game you're making, you might want to actually increase that number further, allowing more objects to be saved. Let's move on to how we actually save those elements. So we're going to add an action. We're going to go to our array. I'm going to click on the option that says set X, Y. So the first one we're going to keep as zero and the second one we're going to do as loop index. So how far are we through looping through these objects at the moment? And for the value, we're going to do objects to get a list of our objects, hit the dot, and then I believe it's called object type name. That's the one we're going to press done. We're then going to check this and we're just going to copy and paste it a couple more times. And all we're going to do is just change the zero to one and let's get the object's name. We're going to store the object's X position. And second time, we're going to change the zero to two. And let's get the object's name. We're going to store the Y position. So we stored the three values that we need. Now we need to actually check when we finish looping through these. And there's a really, really simple way to set this up. All we're going to do is just right click on the side here. And we're going to add a local variable. All we're going to do is call this loop count. And we'll start this at zero. Our last action for when we loop through this array will check how far we are through that loop. So we're going to go to system and we're just going to set the value of loop count to the loop index. Now we've got that set up, we can actually check when that loop has finished. So what we're going to do is we're just going to right click here. Make sure you're right clicking on this particular action. And all we're going to do is add a sub event. And this is just going to be a simple system check. And all we're going to do is compare variable. I'm just going to see if it's equal to objects dot count and then minus one. And that's because our index value starts at zero. Count will tell us how many objects we've got. So we just need to take that extra one in consideration and then hit done. That tells us that we've actually saved all the important stuff that we need to save now. So we can now actually save the file. So we're going to go to array and click on this one that says download. Now it's going to ask for what you want to call the file. And what we're going to do for this is we're going to remove that data, but keep the .json. We're then going to use our input file name that we set up. So remember what you called that. I called mine just file name dot text, and then use the and sign. And this will save it as whatever we put in that box. So that is save done. And we can test this now by just going to our layout, hitting play. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to move some objects just to the side, just so I know that this is a sort of different layout. I'm going to try save first and it says name is required. And I'm just going to put my save and then just hit the save button. And we get a JSON file that's been saved in my downloads folder. Let's move on to loading. Now we move on to the loading side and we need a few more objects for this. So the first object we're going to add, we're going to keep it really simple. It's just a text box and I'm just going to call this invalid file. Now you can upload any file that you want into your sort of game, your scenario. And all we want is a really, really simple way to check if a file is valid or not. And if it's not, we just want a little bit of feedback to the user to go, you've entered the file that we don't like. Once you've set that up, we're just going to just quickly make that initially visible off. And again, this is just going to be a little pop up that will appear if for any reason we enter a file that the game does not like. Next, we need a way to actually select the file that we want. So I'm just going to right click, insert new object, and I'm going to look for something called a file chooser. And then just press insert. When you click this button, it will look into your local files and you'll be able to select the file that you want. It then brings it back into construct. Now we actually don't want to use this button because it's ugly so we're just going to place it out the way we still get to use the control for it but we're going to pass all that control to our load button and to get this big ugly gray button on the file chooser make sure that you go to the accept and just write .json this just means when you browse json files will be the only ones that come up final object that we need is something called ajax so we're just going to scroll down and grab the ajax one and once we load the file from our file chooser this is then going to pass it back into our array so you can see a lot of stuff is needed just to get this process to work, but it'll be worth it. In our event sheet then, we're gonna add either a new comment or a new group. I'll stick with groups for now because I think they look better. I'm just gonna call it load. 
Bear in mind that if you're using these groups, they do take up one of your events. But again, if you're following along with this tutorial, you should be on premium anyway, so that shouldn't matter. So first thing we want to do is check if we're clicking the load button. So we're just gonna use our mouse and we're just gonna do on object clicked and check if we've clicked on load. Now again, the load button is just the placeholder for us. So what we're gonna do is add action. We're gonna to go to our file chooser and we're just gonna use the option called click. This simulates you clicking on the file chooser and will load up your local files. Once you've picked your files from the file chooser, we can then use this option called on change. So this checks if we've actually selected a file. So we can use this option to then trigger our next bit of code. And what we're going to use is the Ajax object and this request URL. This is gonna take in the file path that we've been given from the file chooser and then allow us to save that as a parameter that we're then able to use inside an array. As for the tag, I'm just gonna call it load. I'm gonna keep that really, really simple. And for the URL, we're gonna use file chooser dot file URL at, press enter, then in the brackets, write zero and hit done. This has now saved our file path and it's trying to load that file up. Next, we're gonna add a new event and we're gonna use the Ajax option and we're just gonna do on complete. And for the tag, I'm just gonna write load. Make sure when you do load, it is in the same case as what you wrote it as previously. So if you put a capital letter, it needs a capital letter here. So on that load complete, you've successfully loaded the file. We can now pass that back to our array. So we're gonna to go to array, we're gonna click load. We're gonna search Ajax dot last data. So the last data that was loaded up by Ajax, we're gonna load that into our array. Now that we've loaded our file and all the data has gone to our array, we can now check if that was a valid file or not. So to do this, we're just gonna right click and we're just gonna add in a sub event. We're gonna to go to our array. We just want to look at the very first element. So we click compare X and Y, it'll be set up already for us. We can hit done. And if it is a valid file, that value should no longer be zero. So we can just invert that to say that this is now a valid file because the first value has changed. We're also gonna add in an else statement. Now this else statement will check if the file is invalid. And to keep it really simple, all we're going to do is just take that text we set up, invalid file. We're just gonna set visible and make sure that we can now see it. We're then gonna add a short wait and this can be only around about three seconds, doesn't need to be very long. And then we're just gonna set that text invisible. So a really, really simple system that basically just says, have the first value in the array changed because we've loaded up a correct file that we can recognize. If not, just tell them it's invalid and don't do anything else. So let's go back to this line of code. We've now got a valid file, so what do we want to do? Well, the most important thing to do first is actually take our objects and delete them all. What we don't want to do is have duplicates of the same object. So this will remove all objects first and then we can add in the ones from the save file. So once we've done that, we can just right click and we can add in our final sub event. I'm gonna do system. I'm gonna scroll down and grab the repeats. And we're gonna repeat for the array dot height. Finally, we can create our objects. So we're gonna to go to system. And we're looking for this one called create object by name. Now to start off with the object name, we're gonna take our array, which has now got our new values from our save file. And we're gonna do at, the first value is zero. And the second one is loop index. And then close the bracket. Now what I recommend is just copy and pasting this for the X and Y position. The only thing we've got to change is for the X, that zero is gonna to change to a one because we saved the X coordinates in slot one. And for the Y, we saved everything in slot two. Once you're done, hit done. And that is it, we're now ready for our test. So we've got all the objects here. I'll start off by creating just another save file. So my save two. I'm then just gonna drag some objects around just so we can see that this one's slightly different. Let's put our player at the top here and hit save. This is then gonna save as a JSON file. We can then load up that particular file or let's load up a different file. So my save from the last game and you'll see it moves all my objects around. I can also take in a load that I did when I did my previous testing. 
So this was one that actually had less objects in, this still works. So you can actually go from having less objects to more objects on the screen. Again, this is very reminiscent of something like uh, Mario Maker, so that sort of style. But again, it's a really, really simple system where you can actually start saving files in your game and allowing the player to come back to that particular part of the game. If you want to see this concept taken further into a full-fledged Mario Maker style game, please let me know. Obviously, this will be for premium users only. So so easiest way to show me is to like the videos. And if enough people like it, then I will happily make the video.